Peace to the family. It's been a while on Facebook. Facebook has been a while. Okay, let's really talk, let's really talk. Looking forward to a positive build today. Let's really get it in. Like I said, it's been a while since I've been on Facebook. <laughs> it's been a while. Let's get to it. I did this stream today to make it clear that you should be ashamed of yourself provided you come out of this quarantine and you wind up broke or you end up broke or you wind up in a more bad situation economically than you was prior. We don't have no business being poor or struggling. All of us should have a mass wealth by the time this quarantine is over. You know, I'm really living my days and saying to myself on the real I'm not saying I want the virus to continue I'm just saying I put the pressure on myself to ensure that when it's all said and done I squeeze as much juice out of this situation as possible that's a fact the economy is in our favor right now and what you got to understand is the conversation, the narrative that's being proposed or being put forth by major media, you got to understand that narrative comes from wealthy people who are in an endeavor to control the market. So when you hear, oh man, the economy is bad, bad for who? The economy is not bad for people who don't have money. It's bad for people who do have money. Understand that the pendulum has finally swung in your favor. The pendulum has finally swung in your favor. <clears throat> what does that mean? I'm going to explain it to you right now. The cats that got all the bread, they had the $300 a share. Apple. Apple's damn near $500 a share when the economy was good. Okay? You got to just think about it. People was paying $300, $400, $140, $80 a share. $1,000 a share, $600 a share to have ownership in companies. That's how much the stocks were going for, for you to buy a share. And so when you're paying three, four, five hundred, a thousand dollars a share, and then the economy goes to hell, and then the shares become $9 and $15 and $20, when you hear them complaining on TV, yo, the economy is down, it's, the market's unstable, it's too volatile, just sell your stocks, sell your stocks. Yo, when they're selling, you have to buy. When they're selling, you should be buying. That's how this thing works. But you know what we do? We hear the news and we go, yeah, shit is down, it's bad. You heard what they say. You see what the economy's doing? We don't need to be involved with it. What the hell you mean we don't need to be involved with it? And I constantly do posts on my Instagram just to inform people what's going on. I'm constantly on Instagram. Sometimes I'm showing you, look, I just bought another 100 shares. I just bought another 200 shares. This is what you guys got to understand. This, this case in point, Ameri American Airlines, right? Case in point. When you look at American Airlines, as an example, when you look at American Airlines, they traditionally are about 40 or more dollars, not even 40, they, they neighbor $60 on an average what they share is. When you look at Royal Caribbean, this is a cruise line, ships, okay? They're normally around $140 a share. When Royal Caribbean goes down to about 
anything under $25. I'm not going to tell you guys what to do. I'm going to tell you what I do. I throw almost all my money in there. I throw as much as I could possibly throw inside there. <laughs> when American Airlines, it, yo, it went to $9 and change about two weeks ago. I threw everything in there, including the kitchen sink and, and my next door neighbor. Because I understand it doesn't even really touch $9. It normally hits around 10 something. If it does, it, it stays on 11. But if it goes into the $10 range, you're probably not going to go lower than $10.30. How's it going? But when it does go, when you see the number 10, my eyes light up. So there's, there's different things you could do. You could day trade. You could swing trade. You could just hold it down. Hold it down. What I mean by hold it down? Well, right now, you know, flights cost about $40, $50, $60 to go from the extreme part of the country to the other side of the extreme. Meaning, from California to New York, you're likely to get a flight for $60, and there'll probably only be 7 to 10 people on that flight. If the world's not going to end, let's just presume that the world is not going to end. Is it safe to conclude that people will get back on planes because if you believe people are going to get back on planes then here's the question if i know a stock is normally around 50 dollars and i see it for nine dollars and change what's going to happen one year from now what's going to happen two years from now what's going to happen six months from now are you walking with me so that's when i stockpile okay every time it hits nine dollars and change i'm gonna buy a whole bunch why? Because my nine dollars, even if the economy doesn't go completely back into the shape that it was in, I'll take three and a half times my profit. I'll take four times my profit. You feel what I'm saying? I'll do that. Because for me, it's a no brainer. People are going to get back on planes. Eventually, when this shit is over, people are first thing they're going to want to do because they had the quarantine and they couldn't go nowhere they're going to overcompensate and want to travel as fast as they can this is a fact people are going to want to hit the cruises they're going to want to go back into hotels and they're going to want to get onto planes all three of those industries complement each other so royal caribbean if i see them at they was at 21 dollars about three weeks or a month ago they was at 22 dollars about two three weeks ago and each time it came back, doubled up and went back up to like $47, $49. And then it goes back down. It normally stays in the ballpark of uh, $33 or so. It normally stays there. So there's different things you could do with that. You could swing trade. You could day trade. You could, you could realize the behavior in this down market. In this down market, you got to know the highs in a low market. You got to know the highs in the bear market. It's, this is why they call it dead cat bounce. So... There's different things you could do. But first of all, if I see Royal Caribbean at $23, $24, I mean, I could wait and see if it would go as low as $21. we only seen that but once. But I'll wait and see if it can even come that close because I know when it goes low in the 20s, it's not really going to go lower than $23. So when I see it around $23, I know it's a quick come up because Royal tends to bounce back and more than double when it bounced back inside of a week and a half, two weeks. So I can say, I'm a swing trade, I'm gonna buy something with the intention to just double my bread up inside of a week and a half, two weeks, wait for it to drop and do the same thing over and over again. This is what people are doing, fam. They, <laughs> they watching the dead cat bounce, meaning this is a market where the economy is constantly going down, but it's like a basketball. So if you throw a basketball in the air, right? That's like into the bull market when everything's going up. But boom, watch this, the ball drops. When the ball drops, unless it has no air in it, unless the market crashes, right? If the ball drops, what happens? It's gonna bounce again. But when it bounces back up, when the ball bounces back up, will it bounce up as high as it did the first time that it dropped? When the ball bounces a second time, will the second bounce be higher then the previous bounce, when it bounces a third time, would the third bounce be as high as the second bounce? No. But what you can expect is it's going to come back from off that ground back up. And when it bounces again, you could expect for it to come back up. So what if you understand that? That's called dead cat bounce. 
then what you do, you play the game. You say, well, shit, you know what? I know American Airlines, when it hits around $10, you mark my words, today it went as low as I think $10.72. I didn't catch it at 72 cents, I caught it at 1080. Later on, like like three hours later, I caught it at 1080. It went back up to 11 and change, came down to 1080. So guess what I'm good for? Yo, listen, if you got $500 to play with, like I show my students, you got $500 to play with, trade on every 10, 20 cents. It goes up, it goes down. It goes up, it goes down. Don't even worry about it hitting 50 cents, 30 cents. Trade on every time it goes up 20 cents. When it, go, when it, when it goes down 20 cents, buy it at 20 cents. When it goes down 20 cents. So if it's, in other words, if it's $11.20, when it goes to $11, buy it. And then when it goes back up 23, 24, your goal is 20 cents. This is just an example. Buy it at 20 cents. What is this gonna do? Well, if you if you do this about three times for five hundred dollars, you're gonna make about three hundred dollars. When you're walking with me, you're gonna see how to make three hundred dollars. You just need bait. You just have enough bread to have enough bait. You do the same thing with five thousand dollars, then on twenty cent increments, it's gonna make you three thousand dollars. It's just, it's just a bait. I, you know, when I'm when I do the course, I actually got class coming this Sunday. I'm gonna show people the game. There's different ways to approach it. You ain't gotta wait for something to completely flip. I got one account that I'm using that is just like I'm waiting until next year. <laughs> I'm waiting till six months down the line because you buy enough shares. Like I got a thousand American Airlines shares. So guess what? With that thousand of shares, I wouldn't care if the shit went up only two dollars. I would have made two thousand dollars. That's more than I would have made if I put that money in the bank. You walking with me? That's more than what I would have made if I put the money in the bank. That's real talk. Now on the other end, I have another account, I'm doing my day trading. And I'm using, I'm not using $500, I'm using more than $500. But the fact is, if I play the law of average and I understand, yo, this shit is going to go up and down, up and down 20 cents at a time. It's going to go up and down more than 20 cents at a time. It's like 30 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents. People say, yo, polite, why are you so excited about making... 50 cents because it's how many times I make the 50 cents on a trade that I execute. I hope you're walking with me. So in other words, for every dollar, let's say I make 50 cents because I wait for something to go up 50 cents and I wait for it to go down and then I wait for it to go up. Every time it goes down, I buy it. When it goes back up 50 cents, I'm good. That means I'm making 50% of the money that I got put in. This means if I put $500 up, I'm making $250 every time. Let's say it goes up and down. Let's say we have the type of day where I was blessed for it to go up and down eight times. Then that'd be eight times $250. That's $2,000. That means I use $500 to, as the bait to make me $2,000 in that day. If you think that's not going on today, y'all are tripping. I'm doing my best. I, I be saying this stuff right now. You take it, you run, you find whatever tutorials you can find, do what you do. In my class though, I, yo, my phone get hit. The sun rises at 9.30 a.m. for all my students because that's when the market opens and it closes at four. I drop all the other things that I do. Real estate and all this stuff. Well, I ain't really dropped the real estate, but I pre my preoccupation, what I do during the day, even when you watch me doing my streams, I'm only doing my streams after four o'clock when the market closed or before 9.30 a.m. because I'm on my day trade, I'm on my swing trade, and the swing trading is like day trade, the only thing you're not doing it, you're not executing your trades, you're holding your positions over 24 hours. So basically what you're saying is, you know what, I'm gonna wait because tomorrow or the day after, things are looking up. And I wanna make two or three dollars at a time. I don't wanna just make the 50 cents at a time, the 30 cents at a time. But trust me, trade on 10 cents, fucking cares. It's, whatever you're investing in, you look at the volume. The volume, when you look at the charts, you look at the volume. So something like Royal Caribbean, be having like millions of people that purchase day to day. That's what the volume is. How many people made purchases, right? How many people bought shares? So you look at how many people bought shares. It's so interesting how people want to call me and I know they see me live. They don't call me when the shit is not live. It's so annoying. And I'm going to say that so they know. You know what I'm talking about. Don't call me when I'm live. You had the whole time. You could have called me. So anyway. 
I wouldn't care if it was only 10 cents you was making. You do it, it depends how many times you have that 10 cents. It's, it depends how much times on every dollar. For every dollar, that's a 10 cents. So every $10 is $1. Every 100 would be $10. So if you're playing around with $100 back and forth and you get to pull what I'm talking about off 10 times for the day, you made $100 from your $100. Don't tell me you ain't got no freaking money, man. You can sit there with, your, with a little bit of money and start playing with it to build up enough money to do the same thing on another level. Then after that, then you start dealing with the options. Do you know you could buy into the future? If you buy further, far enough into the future, you could pay one cent or two cents to own a share of a company that, pre that presently, to have the right to own shares of a company that's $10 a share, $20 a share, whatever. Let's say, let's say a company has a, tw uh, let's say you got a pharmaceutical company called the Immunomedics which I killed them with that. About two weeks ago, it was $9. It went up to $21. I believe they onto something. I mean, I made a, I made a lot, but I didn't sell it because I feel like it, it might skyrocket. I don't know what they doing going so high during this coronavirus unless they're playing an integral role or they onto some kind of new medication or something so i'm leaving my bread in it so i put i, put, I got it when it was nine dollars about two weeks ago because i've been putting money in pharmaceutical companies i was just waiting to see who does what and their joint thank you so much and their joint went more than double so i made over 100 percent went over 100 percent and if you bought zoom let's say you bought zoom uh if you was in the game and you bought Zoom like five, six months ago, when Zoom was like $60, you definitely won. Because as of this last month, Zoom went as high as $150. Near $160, I think $159 to be exact. But it's common sense. People gonna be on the internet more than ever. So it's common sense. So just like I'm banking on people going back on planes and people going back into hotels, it's the same way you understand what setting we living in today. What's the environmental setting? More people gonna be in the home, more people gonna invest in microphones and, and speakers, streaming mics, headphones. So then you start looking at companies like Best Buy and B&H and you get in there early enough so you can make your bread because there's gonna be a boom for that type of technology and, and the retailers of the same. That's just the way you gotta calculate. That's the way you got to calculate. <clears throat> but you got to be in the future. You can't jump on when the shit done got jumped on already. That's why it's always costing us too much money. Because we're not thinking about it. It's imbrotherpolite.app. You go to the website. It's a website. You go to imbrotherpolite.app. I got it pinned to the top. The class is $99. It's three classes in total. I got another class coming up this Sunday. This Sunday is going to be lit. Uh, upon purchasing it, you're going to get the previous class with the PDF and a, and a whole bunch of different associated links for your study. But this Sunday, we're going to be dealing with options. Uh, we're going to be dealing with the cryptocurrencies. Strategies and understanding. Oh, the bulk of the strategies would be class three. But what I'm doing now is just getting people to understand the technical part. Because you want to buy, you want to sell. But you don't even understand how to read the graphs, the chart. What button do I press to execute the trade? So just got to make sure everybody's on the same page before we start doing the behind the back move, the 360. The ball through the legs off the backboard, alley -oop. Before we do all of that, we get all the technical things right. And in between, a couple other things right. Just like how I put my good brothers and sisters on from the course about seed invest. The ability to invest in a startup company before their IPO, before their initial public offering, before they go public and allow people to buy in their shares, buy it before they go public. It's worth a whole lot more. But where do you go to do that? So I gave you the site, Seed Invest. Yo, them courses is not a game. People think it's, yo, I'm telling you, $99, that $99 you invest in the class, if you could go through the first lesson and can't see the value and what you're gonna get out the whole class, you're crazy. Everybody knows. I go super hard. And it's fun for me because I want a story to be told 
of how many people would accredit me for amassing wealth during a time where people were struggling and scary. <clears throat> See, the knowledge that I present is the stimulus package. Mm -hmm. I got a $99 stimulus package that's guaranteed <laughs> gonna make sure you make your bread. Cause guess what? If you got more time to yourself, you laid off, you in the house, you ain't got much bread. Yo, that's what I'm saying. No one can make excuses. Cause I wouldn't give a damn if you only had a hundred dollars. That investment that you make in class is going to crush it. It's going to show you what to do and how to do it, when to do it. Facts. Yeah, you hear all the doctors talking that talk that I've been discussing, right? <clears throat> you see, the thing is, me studying biology, and what people don't know, I take online courses on the strength because I'm planning to go back to school. You know, I dropped out 10th grade, so I gotta, I gotta more than pass go. I gotta take all sorts of bullshit classes and all whatever, but fine. But I plan to do it in another two, three years. But anyway, the way I'm wired, I just wanna walk in there and take my test and focus on details that I might have missed because I already wanna be very fluent and expansive as far as my ability to communicate the information. <clears throat> so what that means is, what that means is, I don't want to be there struggling, got to study, got to take care of my children, got to make bread. I made sure I made my bread, I could pay for whatever school I want to go to. I'll just pay the bread, I don't, give, I don't care. So I won't be preoccupied with making the money, and I won't be preoccupied with having to do the study, because I'm already studying college courses. Like I got the MIT course on bacterial genetics, microbial biology, and that's stuff that I'm into. Because I want to create, opp create opportunities for my people. Understanding where our struggles and our stripes are. But you got to have a person that's motivated to bring about change in those fields from a pro-black, pan-African, black nationalistic di disposition. I don't feel we really got much representation from our community in those fields. So I want to pave the way for new technology and new, new medicine. I want to do that because I know the way I think. So what people don't understand is when I be building, it's because I already be taking courses from college. And then I listen into the lectures at Harvard and everything that's online that's available. I do a lot on my free time just because of my, my zeal for the knowledge. So when I come to a conclusion based on the information, I'm not going to say I'm on the same exact page as people going to school. <clears throat> but I know I study more than the people that go to school. And I know my interests as far as my people are concerned, is different from their interest to just make sure they pass their next exam. It's just different. So I'm gonna I'm make connections that other people ain't gonna make because of my interest. I'm only doing this because I'm like, yo, I wanna find some groundbreaking approaches to help my people. That's all I wanna do. So anyway, so I don't deviate, we can get back to the money. Yeah, you all gonna hear doctors a week or two behind stuff that I be saying especially when a brother put the information out in front of them then it's like shit we got to concede to that fact then people getting confused who said it first and you know what to people's credit maybe other people that maybe people think about things relatively relatively close at the same time but we've seen quite a bit of coincidences from me putting out the the information about the flora and discussing the good bacteria and how important it is in terms of the viruses, then all of a sudden, information goes out. Yeah, your good bacteria communicates with your immune system. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Oh, over 50% of the people that got the coronavirus happen to have digestive problems. I'm like, all right. And that just happens to come out a week and a half later. The Surgeon General, after I did the debate with Jabari, literally on April 15th, the day after, less than 24 hours from the time I did my debate with Jabari, confirmed what I was saying. The numbers are inflated. We're going to use a new model. We're going to stop funding the World Health Organization and CDC. We're going to turn down Bill Gates. Uh, these numbers is just not accurate. Ain't that much people died. We got a new model to get us closer to the real numbers. It's like, okay. But that comes out less than 24 hours from the time I do my debate with Jabari while the brother Jabari is still just tripping. You know, people be so interested in winning the debate and not realizing, yo, my concern is on our health. It's just different. You know, I'm just looking at a brother like, yo, I get it. You got to do your best to undermine a person's intelligence and make it sound, 
make it like the word inflammate doesn't exist. Tell me I'm pronouncing triclosan the wrong way and you call it triclosan and there's no such word. It's like the type of stuff you got to deal with when you're in this community teaching. Son focusing on debating because he ain't know enough knowledge to teach. I'm focusing on teaching. So I'm going to win the debate by default because I know this is something I'm into. I would have never took that type of debate against me because anybody that's paying attention can clearly tell, yo, I don't play games with this. I could talk to you about endocytosis, exocytosis. I could talk to you about the lysosomes. I could talk to you about the rough endoplasmic reticulum. I could talk to you about horizontal gene transfer. I could talk to you about transduction, transformation, and conjugation. I could talk to you about DNA viruses or RNA viruses or the seven different types of viruses that's part of the Baltimore classification. I could do that. That's like nothing to me. What part of that you gonna study to prepare for me inside of two to three days? When I already got it. That's what I'm saying. People only started disagreeing with this information maybe a month ago. I've been living this information for as long as I've pretty much been conscious and just more intensely within the last three to five years. So it's insane when you know someone's attempting to microwave information. <clears throat> How long can you last? You're gonna run out of gas. If you don't train in endurance, how are you gonna go 12 rounds? You come out swinging and gas out by the second or third round. You'll be just exhausted. I'll be over here full of energy. Pull the rope with dope on you. Take your ass somewhere where you don't belong in conversation though, and that's not even my point. Just so you can gas out. Give me the best that you got. Then I just get a range for what you don't know, and I just build a conversation around all your weak points. How you gonna have a conversation? This ain't what you do. Only for me to find out you're not good at none of the points of the conversation because this just really ain't your math. This ain't what you do. The well, problem is, <clears throat> I don't take a debate where I can't teach. So, if you watch my debates, I don't spend time attempting to discredit people and tell you what they don't know and how they talk. I don't spend my time doing that. When I do debates, I spend my time teaching. Because that's the whole goal. The opportunity because it's contentious and sometimes it's more appealing when it's contentious because there's going to be argumentation. You want to listen to people's diatribes? Fine. I take that opportunity since I know we're going to get a lot of people to listen to teach. Real talk. <clears throat> you don't know about the protein receptors, the ACE2, that's making, for the most part, the virus compatible with cells. So it could bind. Come on, like it's crazy. Why? How would you even argue with me about a, a virus if you don't understand the mechanisms that make a virus a virus, or with the difference between DNA virus and RNA virus? It's ridiculous. <clears throat> you can't tell me what's going on with the nucleosis. You can't tell me roughly how much ribosomes is in the cytoplasm of the cell. What are ribosomes in the first place? It's insane. It's like happen every day. people got no business disagreeing with something. Sometimes you should just chill. You got no business disagreeing. It's weird. It's very weird. I like XRP. <laughs> every week, I, I put money in XRP. The way I train my wives and the way I train my students, my other students, because my wives are my students too, is if you see cryptocurrencies at a fractional piece of a dollar, like XRP right now is about 19 cents, which is a very good thing. So you buy 100 of those and you're going to get a little over 500 shares. Why not buy $200 worth of XRP, which is Ripple? The central bank is talking about using Ethereum and Ripple. You keep up with current events and you say, oh shit, if this goes down, it's going to be a boost. What we do know inevitably, the world is going to transition to cryptocurrency and most of those ones are going to go up, as we see out here. It may not boom <clears throat> identically to Bitcoin, which went as high as $15,000 a share and jumped near $10,000 in the same year, last year. 
it's ridiculous. But what we do know, a lot of cryptocurrencies, when this thing gets started, it's going to skyrocket. It's going to be $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 a share. It's going to happen. So something like XRP, Ripple, provided the central bank. The central bank starts using this, goddamn, And they talk about it in light of the stimulus package. Paper money is getting old. Okay? Paper money is getting played out. The new 5G technology is coming in. The Internet of Things is in actuality. We're talking about a new infrastructure as far as technology is concerned. If you take something like Ripple, which is XRP, and you put $100 on there, you get 500 shares. You put another $100 on there, around that 18, 19 cents, you're gonna wind up 503, 503 to 508 shares, depending on when you buy it. The goal for me is to get, let me get a thousand shares of that. <clears throat> $200. It could probably do nothing. It's gonna most likely do something. Most crypto is gonna most likely do something. Most of the ones that educated wise, you make an educated decision, gonna do something. And so, let's say the shit hits that thousand dollar mark, goes to a thousand dollars. Cause when it happens, it's gonna be damn near overnight. It's not gonna happen gradually. It's gonna be 19 cents one minute, it's gonna be five dollars the next, which is gonna be a hell of a profit <clears throat> because it'd be five thousand dollars. So you spend two hundred dollars, you get over a thousand shares. If that shit ever hit a thousand dollars a share, that's a million dollars, people. That'd be the smartest investment you ever made. Your two hundred dollars and make you a million dollars. How you think the people felt that bought Bitcoin for thirty-five dollars? Every ten shares is three hundred and fifty dollars. So they're three hundred and fifty dollars last year made them one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You understand what I'm saying? It's five years ago if you spent $35 a share for Bitcoin and you bought 10 shares at $350, your $350 made you 150 grand. And if you spent $3,500, you made $1.5 million. Probably 1.6 when it comes down to it. <laughs> so, what I tell my wives and my students, I showed them. Lumens, I, I showed them different joints. I showed them who MoneyGram is looking to get the drop on because MoneyGram's losing to Western Union, but they're getting behind certain cryptocurrency, a certain cryptocurrency in particular. I'm not giving nobody advice on what to spend their money on. I'm just telling you what I think about, and that's just for my protection. I just tell you things that I be thinking about what I do. So MoneyGram is like, well, we may be losing the paper money battle, but this crypto battle to, to send this money quicker Secure transactions quicker. We gotta get behind this company. So I say, man, that's worth putting ten dollars on because if the company is worth point zero zero one three four five, it's worth a fractional piece of a penny. I got ten dollars on that. I got, in fact, I got ten dollars on any crypto that's a fractional piece of a penny, so I can get my hundreds of shares. At least I'm in the game. <clears throat> and if you could afford to, you do your best to throw $10 down the damn line. If you could afford to, you put $50 down the line. If you could afford to, you put $100 down the line. If you could afford to, you put $200 down the line. And when you get all those people on the line, you do it all over again gradually. Just take your time. Because all you got to do is be right once, and you're a millionaire. And it wouldn't have cost you more than $1,000. Okay, maybe 2,000 tops, but $10 down the line. Yo, you could just literally, or 10 more minutes. You could just literally spend $1,000 with the strategy I'm talking about. And that $1,000, you just follow the strategy that I got and based on which currencies. I can could, I could almost guarantee, I would guarantee anybody that's listening to me Within five years, you have no choice but to be a millionaire just for that $500 to $1,000. You spread it out evenly, 
and fuck it if you you lose on three hundred dollars that you put out there but the other two hundred dollars makes you a fucking millionaire i'll take it <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'll take it you got no business being broke <clears throat> you got no business being broke i'm just talking that real i don't play no games so this sunday i'm going over to all these joints i'm just giving up game yeah you pay 99 dollars. so fucking what like it's it's insane i never even charge so cheap for any of my courses but i show love because i know the situation got people perplexed i took it easy now i'm gonna tell you this i'm so confident about what i got going on i was just telling my wives and them i may not play basketball again or box because i don't want to fuck up my ankle tear my achilles Pull a hamstring, tear a rotator cuff. Yo, listen. I want to be in the best health I could possibly be. Because the level of knowledge I have now that I didn't have when I was younger, when I was on my dope, my dope boy shit, running through money, spending money on clothes and being an asshole. Yo, remember, when Apple came out with the iPod, the classes uh, at the website, you go to imbrotherpolite.app. P-O-L-I-G-H-T Spell brother the right way It's pinned here to the top I am brother polite dot app I give you enough knowledge right now You don't have to pay for the class And you just follow what I'm saying Use common sense It ain't that deep <clears throat> It is I just get into real technical terms And I reconfirm Or I establish the necessary conviction you need to, So you just feel so good about everything you're doing down the line Which one's down the line and why I just do the research I'm like crazy when it comes to the research And that's the beauty about doing all these debates And going into history Going into religion and everything it, I have a certain eye for research And knowing where to go To substantiate my claims Go to real powerful source material So when you take that into consideration Oh my goodness <clears throat> Listen to me carefully there's no way 500 to to $1,000. You spread it out even just on crypto alone. There's no way. There's no way. I, yo, you got to be right at least 2 out of 10 times. Or 15, 20 times. Because remember, some sh shit is fractional. I'm, I'm messing around. I'm putting the spreads on the fractional pieces of a penny. That's what I'm putting the spreads on. Remember, 18, 19 cents is giving you 500 shares at $100. 500 shares yo you do know bitcoin was once fractional of a penny you do know it didn't just its initial public offering wasn't in the whole dollars that shit was fractional of a penny just like these other cats the second the world makes that transition all those little ten dollars that you put on things that were point zero zero one two three of a cent <clears throat> how many times over Will you be a millionaire? Just do the math. Do, do your math. Two hundredths, two thousandths of a dollar. Two thousandths, two thousandths of a dollar. We go in three places. Three places from the decimal, meaning we're not even in the pennies. We're in the thousandths place. What $10 means? How many shares do you get from something like that? You see, do the math. If $100 times 18 cents gives you 500 plus shares what is ten dollars going to give you on a fractional piece of a penny in the hundreds place at one or two come on man eh? listen when the world changed you don't want to be here we go again oh the shares of bitcoin is seven thousand dollars right now i'm gonna buy me a fractional piece of a seven thousand dollars to make me some money uh, i'll put two hundred dollars into something that costs seven thousand it's too late man it's too fucking late it's too late why you want to always get on stuff when it's out of your reach i'm telling you every generation misses out every generation be missing out our generation our people particularly we always miss out because nobody's out there telling us what it is because nobody really knows and the people that know don't be telling us nothing or they not in reach. The, probably the best thing that's ever happened to me, not knocking people that went to school, is that I dropped out. <clears throat> it made me a juggernaut 
for looking up information. And then the next best thing was being conscious and doing debates. It all wound up making sense up until this very day. I got the powers and, and became more refined and developed my potential. And I'm able to use me as my greatest resource to really engage this information and assimilate it as well. So yeah, someone was like, yo, so you just talking about just, I'm like, shit, you ain't even, honestly, you ain't even have to do no research. It makes more sense to do research. But fuck it, just put five, ten dollars down the damn line. Fuck it. Own hundreds of shares of something. <clears throat> several. Own hundreds of shares of several things. So what if you never see the two, three hundred dollars again? So what? It doesn't matter if you never see two, three hundred dollars again. Because one of those ten dollars, not one of those, several of those ten dollars and fifty dollars, several of them. It's going to make you back the little two, three hundred that didn't do what you wanted to do. I, I promise you that. Come on, we waste money all the time. We buy a whole bunch of shit we don't need. Unnecessary dinners. This quarantine is the best thing to happen. You ain't got no excuse for baby showers and all this other crazy shit that be going on when the world is running around normal. All right. You got a nigga saying, don't do it. But these same people, you go to their page, they have no advice to offer you, no suggestions. Don't do it. Don't do what? You now stupid you sound. How you, how you telling somebody don't do something? When Claire's day today, you can see American Airlines was $10.72. And what I want you guys to do, all you got to do is type in AAL on Google every day. Type it every day. And anytime you see anything over $10.72, you could have made your fucking profit. Just it's, people just fucking dumb. It's just retarded. And it, I really believe it'd be agents just making sure whenever I start teaching, they could tell people, no, just to infer doubt. They, ne they never say no with facts. They just say no, don't do it. Doesn't make sense. Don't listen. Don't trust. But they never give you facts. Write down why I know. Write down why I know. So I, so I pretend to hustle off of my back and hustle off of my page. If you speaking the truth and you got the sauce, People gonna follow you because you got the knowledge. Don't try to come on this page. Oh no, he's wrong. Come to my page and I'm a teacher. Yo, have some class. Build your own audience. I don't go on your pages writing that. I never did that to nobody page ever in my life. But you know, <clears throat> I do my thing and people tell you, oh, that's an Airbnb. Oh, it's a car rental. It be broke niggas. Broke, broke, broke. Like, it's a broke teacher right now. Talking about me every chance he get. Well, several of them, right? But guess what? If I was... I, I'm doing good. If I was renting several cars at a time, that would say I have more money than a nigga who buys the nice car once. Just think about it. It's so so lame. I'm in a nice house. Yo, why Polite is always in a different house? Because Polite has four different wives. And all my wives have houses. Okay, and I helped two of my wives, mom, get their own house. Why am I always in a different home? Oh, that you see, he's he be crib hopping. He one minute he in this house and one minute he in that house. Cause I have my own home, and all my wives have their own houses. So duh, I'm gonna be in different houses from time to time. It's simple, but it got for them it gotta be an Airbnb. People always gotta feel like there's a catch. But okay, fine. I'm constantly in Airbnbs, even during the coronavirus, where you not, or oh, hotels, even though it's illegal. You ain't supposed to be having no hotel rooms unless it's just a, just a lame ass spot, cause they don't want to encourage tourism anywhere. It's like, why is it so important for black people, black people to see? that another black person got something nice and, and then have to denounce it. Why is that important? They be saying to themselves, literally, ain't no black man could really come up. Shit gotta be a hotel, he had to steal something, he had to do something negative. That's an Airbnb, that's a car rental. I would feel ashamed as a black man going out my way to say that about another black man. 
like if nobody asks my opinion why am i volunteering an idea that possibly somebody didn't earn what they have what kind of slow sick type of shit is that from a black man but i get it because if you ask the same black men that go out their way to tell you that i have an airbnb go out their way to tell you that i'm jumping in and out of hotels go out their way to tell you that i'm renting my vehicles <clears throat> I'm just traveling all over the world with these celebs. I don't know how that's happening, but I'm not gonna take the time out to have a fucking house. So, and I know all this stuff about real estate that checks out, but I'ma just stay in hotel after hotel. But you know what's interesting? The most interesting part about this is that those people never show their lifestyle. They never show where they live. You never see the women they with. You don't see their money. At least I could go to the money machine. I got a money machine. Shit costs over three hundred dollars. The newest one, and at least I could show you. I on one of my last Facebook lives, what I count? I think I counted like sixty, seventy thousand dollars. My wife told me, "Chill, don't go to one hundred grand cash, cash." Fuck out of here. Say, like, don't do it. <clears throat> People just get angry when they see that. Seventy bands. It's light. I said, yeah, I count one tenth of a mil and chill. I was gonna call Floyd and say, let's battle, let's do battle, <laughs> just to be an asshole. See if I can catch him slipping where he ain't got his cash on him. <laughs> but it's for fun and for motivation. It's for motivation, it's for fun. But my thing is this. I ain't never seen a black man that denounced me or discredited my earnings and my wealth, I ain't never see them demonstrate wealth. So that tell me what it is. Because people who have wealth, they don't go out their way considering somebody else ain't really got their wealth. You see, I don't know one of these guys that ever turn around and say, yo, this is how I'm living. How the hell you know what's going on in someone's life? You don't. All I can say is that I'm consistent. If you say I've been renting cars, you have to say I've been renting cars for the past five to seven years. If you say I'm living in hotels and Airbnbs, I would have had to been doing that for the past five to seven years. I mean, goddamn, I should be smart enough to switch the game up at one point or the other. At least I'm consistent. I have wives. I've been having wives, all four of them, for over 14 years and my first wife for 22 years. I'm consistent at whatever I do. How many of these men out there that talk about me has demonstrated that they can keep the same woman for just a few months? All my women have been with me for 14 years together. And I got two more that I'm courting. <clears throat> this, stop explaining yourself, bro. This ain't about explaining myself, this is about teaching my brothers and sisters this part of the game because guess what they're gonna do it to you too at whatever level you want you ain't got to be somebody that has a high profile on the internet you're, you're, the members of your community gonna do that and that's why you got to move out the fucking neighborhood look what they do to me on the internet imagine if I lived around these people they would want to kill me just out of jealousy just out of anger somehow it ain't fair that I'm doing that good when we come from the same place but look what I do I offer this free information and you know what they do the same people talking crazy about me. You know how much they can learn from me if they just open their ears? You know how much they can learn? It's wild. They spend so much time peeping if the car is rented, if the house is an Airbnb. No research, <clears throat> no confirmation. They just say things like this. Imagine if they just listen to the information. Imagine if they listen to the information. And you know what get people is because, yeah, I am good at a lot of things, not just one or two things. So it's almost like, you know what? There's no way somebody can be good at biology, good at politics, good at economics, good at theology. It got to be fake. No one's that good at a bunch of things. I am that good at all those things. Because my video game is reading and writing. That's my video games. That's, that's what I play. I play with books. That's what I do. During my time, I play with books. 
I read and I write all day. I study all day. My wives will tell you when I'm in the shower, educational information is playing. I don't miss a beat. I don't miss a beat. When I'm driving, educational material is playing. I pull over, I'm reading. I don't even have a notebook. I just retain. I study so much, it's easy to just retain the information I get as it comes, especially if I love it. And then I replay the same thing over and over and over. No notes, because I would never be able to catch back up to all the notes I write, because I'm always learning. I'm in a perpetual state of learning. These other guys would never even tell you they'd spend time learning. They just like to give you the impression they just know. <laughs> it's insane. The women make me better. I love being around women. I do. I ain't even gotta make it deep. Women make me confident. I love their energy. I love their vibe. I want to be around as much of them as possible. Let's just do that. Let's just do it that way. I just love being around women. You sound real narcissistic, bro. Call it like you want, but I know one thing. My children don't live in no roach infested, one bedroom crib with three, four people. Call it what you want, but all my wives make six figures and they have the ability to leave and they choose to stay. And I contributed to that. Call it what you want, but they all have their own homes. They all have their own cars. And two of my, the mothers of my children, because I have two mothers of my children, they ain't got to worry about a thing for the rest of their life because of me. That's a fact, and, they, and they'll swear by it. So, I mean, if that's narcissistic, what do we call them when the shit is fucked up? Because that shit is together. You know, it's, you know, someone's always mad when it sounds great. We got all sorts of words when it sounds great. What the hell do you call these single mothers out here with no baby father in their life to raise their children? What's that? That ain't narcissistic. I think that shit's kind of narcissistic. That niggas feel like they so good, they don't got to raise their children. Or that women are so void of error that they can keep making babies, even if the man don't stay around. They do it themselves. Independent black woman, however they want to call that shit. I think all that shit is narcissistic. When, when it's working out, we ain't got the right to brag about it. We only brag about the woman who struggling by herself to raise her children. We call her the strong black woman. But what the hell do we call the women that stay in a relationship with a man for years? What, what's the terminology we use for her? Because everybody who's a strong black woman ain't even in the equation for being in a consistent relationship. And this ain't no knock to sing, single mothers. I'm just saying shit is trash. How, how we be going off. It's trash. But, but anyway, you go to IamBrotherPolite.app. Class is going down this Sunday. It's going to be intense. It's going to be a lot of fun. Take a lot of notes. But I'm going to make sure you understand everything I'm saying. I'm going to make sure you understand everything I'm saying. Got to. Then what's the purpose? Best $99 you ever spent in your life. I'm actually proud that I made it so cheap. I'm proud of that. Because traditionally, my classes is $250, $300 and up. Word right up. I'm going to keep spreading the knowledge. And for those of you that's out there attempting to knock people so you can come up, just build your own situation. Don't talk about people. I, I ain't get this far talking about people. I got this far talking about things I'm interested in. Oh man, I appreciate you guys too. Oh yeah, we had a powerful build. Go to my Instagram. Brother underscore polite. Go to brother, spell brother the right way, underscore P-O-L-I-G-H-T. Mm -hmm. Brother underscore polite. And you can see the build that we had on polygamy. You see me and my boo put it together. Dope. Shelly. This go here, you see. Very beautiful woman. <coughs> P 
people ask me why I ain't tell her to put more clothes on when we doing the stream. Because I like looking at her body when I'm talking. I wasn't distracted. Talk my behind off. It's the thing that makes me disciplined. Life is a paradox like that. You, don't, you ain't going to tell me, oh man, just cover up so people don't get distracted. Well, that's the thing. Maybe she need to be a little uncovered so you can learn how to be disciplined. If you, if you can't focus and learn what you need to learn, something's wild. Something's wild about that. It'd be a house burning next door to me. So long as I understand, it's not going to impact where I'm at. I'm going to keep studying because whatever I'm studying is for the benefit of my family and my community. So I'm not going to be distracted. I just don't got the time to be distracted by anyone or anything. Real talk. I don't got the time for that. But you'll learn. The class will be this Sunday. <laughs> it is wild. No woman's body can, can distract me from learning. No woman's body can. That's light. And that's why I surround myself with voluptuous women. And eventually, you become numb to it. Not that you become no longer attracted to it, but that you don't act like a little boy and lose focus just because you see some big titties or a big butt. So what? If we dealing with knowledge, we dealing with knowledge under any and all circumstances. I'm not going to be taken off my path because of my luster. <laughs> luster don't pay the bills, people. Knowledge does, though. And sex has its place. And it's very important when used properly. But how many people want to engage or indulge in the metaphysics of sex? Very few people want to. So it does them no good. And in that regard, people are having way too much sex. And they're producing way more babies than they could afford. You're taking drugs, it's raising your estrogen levels, contraceptives and everything just to stop the child from being born potentially. All because of a lack of discipline. I ain't got time for stuff like that. I really don't. I'm just not on that type of time, people. So it may mean a lot to other people. Oh man, her breast is so big. Don't show it. It mean a lot to a lot of people, right? But that don't mean nothing to me. So you can't treat me like, you can't treat me like that means a lot to me. Because it don't. I love it. I like to look at it. <laughs> love to touch it. But I mean, damn, if I'm teaching, I'm teaching. That, that got nothing to do with what I'm teaching. I don't care. Like, what, she, should be, she could be butt ass naked. I guarantee you, I teach the same exact way. Focus. I never deviated from my conversation. I wasn't doing all the flirtatious stuff because it's time and place for that. That's not the subject matter. We saw my relationships. So I didn't want to saturate my conversation with sexual themes. But what's powerful is to have a sexual woman there who's able to express her sexuality without me being compromised in the process. So it's, it's just an approach towards teaching that's powerful. Uh, of that gator we saw. Real talk. But you ain't gonna ask me. You're not gonna ask me, a man, to turn my head. Cause a beautiful woman's around her. Men begging me, yo, I can't even hear what you're saying cause her titties is moving all over the place. Man, shut the hell up, man. What kind of soft ass sucker shit is that? That shit just made my education better. Come on, man. It's a young man and my teacher was bad and she was teaching. If I, if I had a beautiful woman, if, if the women I'd be around were my teachers, man, I hope what she's teaching is powerful because there's a higher probability of me retaining everything she's going to say. It's just the power of sex and energy. That's just what that is. It's an energy. It's powerful. Don't shun it. Don't condemn it. Don't hide from it. Like, what kind of man are you? <laughs> Word. What kind of man are you hiding from that? We some weird people. But don't expect me to be weird with you. I ain't going to be weird with you. But yeah, so... I am brotherpolite.app. Class will be in session this Sunday. 
It's going to be phenomenal. You're going to love it. You will not be disappointed. <clears throat> you love class one. Class two going to be nuts. <laughs> I promise you that. Class two is going to have you like, yo, son, just show me how to throw pennies into the future. To own a company a hundred plus times. For 30, 60 bucks. 200 shares into the future. 51 days from now. Six months from now. One year from now. Two years from now. Leap options. Cats want to tell you, but yo, you be careful because you lose your money. What, $30? Yo, you might lose your money. What, you might lose $60? Two years from now, your $60? May not be worth nothing. That's a risk I got to take. Because the $60 that I invest into the future, because I'm getting 200 shares for three cents each, I might have to just take that kind of gamble because that $60 might make me $6,000 two years from now. It might make me $2,000. My $60 might make me a $2,000 profit two years from now. That's just a risk I got to take, God damn it. <laughs> it's just a risk I got to take. Because if I buy it right now, it's not going to be pennies on the dollar. But if I buy it two years from now, one year from now, I could get it for $60. I could buy 200. I can own 200 shares of a company for $60 or $30 for 100 shares at three cents each share. <clears throat> I could buy an option contract for three cents a year or two from now. You do this enough, one month to the next, <clears throat> what's gonna happen? <clears throat> when you live in the future, every time you turn around, you got another month where your money coming in in the thousands because of different turns of events and circumstances. All I know is this, almost any stock that I'm interested in right now, all I know is this, <clears throat> One year from now, it's an extremely high probability those stocks will be worth more than what it's worth right now. And two years from now, I believe they'll be worth that much more than they already will be worth one year from now. I think it's just pretty much common sense. So let me use this common sense. If I'm right and the stocks are actually worth more money than they are right now, then the price that those stocks are worth right now, I would be able to sell them for one, two years from now. So what if I got the right to own 100 shares for $8 that it's worth today? In the future, the shit is back up to $90. So everyone has to buy those stocks for $90. But I'm able, I'm able, okay, to sell it for that 90. But we're gonna subtract it by the dollar amount I have them for. So, uh, that's $81 times 100. It's $8,100, people. I might have spent $30 to get that 8100. I just had to take the risk of losing the $30, the risk of losing three cents times 100. It's worth the risk because shit, I'll take that risk 10 times. And if I'm only right one out of 10, I would have still made all the money back from everything I was wrong about. And if I strike it 50 50, because I pretty much doubt I'm gonna be only right one out of 10 times. But truth be told, if I'm right only two out of 10 times, uh, I'm super happy. I'm just playing the law of average people. And in fact, not only am I playing the law of average, not only am I playing the law of average, the fact of the matter is this. I'm playing the law of average not working in my favor. And if I only come out with a 20% win ratio, I'm running the streets butt-ass naked, happy because of the profit that I made. 
because being wrong eight times wouldn't amount to me being right just once, let alone twice out of 10. <laughs> I'm telling you, people don't really understand. When I say pennies off of millionaires, they don't understand. Things cost pennies when you invest two years into the future. Two years from now, you're gonna be thinking about this conversation two years ago, either on the advantage side or the disadvantage. The disadvantage is I didn't listen to Brother Polite. The advantage side is, damn, I listened to Brother Polite. And now the event, one year from now, two years from now, you're gonna be sitting here saying to yourself, shit, time went by that quick. My daughter about to be a year old in about another month and change. It's been a year already. Guess what I did a year ago? In light of her being born, I had my wife and I invest. Now we executed some of the trades since then. And guess what? I put put options in because I know about the political polarization mm -hmm. of global uncertainty. I know about the political polarization of global uncertainty. And I already knew that we was long overdue a recession. We was long overdue a fall of the economy. We're about two years behind schedule. It happens normally every seven years. I, I said it on my live streams last year. You just type in political polarization or global uncertainty. And I tell you that we are overdue talks of war, some kind of distress or disease. We're long overdue for something to have an impact on the economy. This happens every seven years. And, and we, we was kind of out of that space. We had a, a damn near two year gray area. So I put the money on things going down this year. So the fall of this economy, needless to say, made us a lot of money. And that's why we named our daughter what we named her. Because inside of her name, Nefertari, Camila, Akosua, Atumbre, inside of her name, you find that it also means she brings abundance and wealth. That's why we waited a few days to make an assessment before we named her after she was born. We, we name our children days after they born so we can get a, a idea or incentive. We could read that child and come up with what we really feeling we getting from her. And when we looked at the circumstances that surrounded us, we realized that she marked a new beginning for us economically. So we named her as such. The gorgeous one has arrived in the beauty I'm not going to do it for you. <laughs> I ain't going to do it for you yet. But if y'all saw the name of ceremony, y'all get it. But you know, my daughter has her attributes, man. But let's just say that her name, Nefertari, is not just the gorgeous one. But you got to understand that it also alludes to abundance. <laughs> Okay. Let's just do that. So yeah, we don't just call on her to get her attention. We chant her name because it brings us abundance. It's the secret to the name, to the attributes, hidden attributes. Your name's supposed to always be twofold. Surface meaning that people get. And then the other meaning. The hidden meaning that you're friends, closest akin, family only know. Real talk. It's real talk. Well, you know. Well, for now, you just know. Nefertari, Camila, Kosawa, Tumre. Huh? Oh, no, nah, I'm not hiding. I'm actually, I'm actually ready when y'all ready. So you walk all the way across. <laughs> yeah. The word. Peace to y'all. So hope to see you in class this Sunday. Hope to see you guys in class this Sunday. I'll be by the car. Yeah, just let them know I'm at the car waiting. Yeah, 
is a beautiful day. Like I said, I'm looking to stay in good health, great shape. Do my damn thing. Love you guys. Just give them something else to talk about. Keys time. Give them something to talk about. Yeah, right. It ain't that one. That's this white lady's joint. I see you guys later. This is how we doing this. <laughs> Peace and many blessings. Peace and many blessings. Love you guys.